In the summer of 2003, 108 of the most gifted young musicians, representing 20 different countries of the American continent, convened for a two-week rehearsal period on the campus of Earth University in the Costa Rican rainforest. These two weeks were followed by four more weeks of touring through 18 different cities in Central and South America. The daily schedule for the rehearsal period and tour was grueling, with late nights, early mornings, constant travel, variations in altitude and climate, which took their toll on all. But the passion and enthusiasm of the musicians and the audiences that came in touch with them never dampened. Moreover, thousands of people in the faraway corners of this hemisphere who had never been exposed to classical music discovered spiritual heights that transformed their sense of life forever. This is a story of a journey of discovery of music, the self, each other, and the vast human and cultural diversity that weave and strengthen the noble spirit of the Americas. Mi nombre es Brenda Diaco, soy de Argentina, tengo 23 uh, años. My name is Roy Beeson, and I play the oboe, and I'm 25 years old, and I just graduated bueno, from Cleveland uh, Institute of Music. Mi nombre es Aristides Rivas, soy de Venezuela. Uh, my name is Shelby uh, Latin, and I'm originally from Rockford, Illinois, but I've been at Bloomington, Indiana Bianca, for the past four Rose years. My name is which means White Rose Garcia. Me llamo Diego. Um, De Uruguay, I tengo 21 años, toco violín. My name is Berenica. Eh, I'm 20 ahora. years old and I'm a pianist. And My name I is Scott Harrison. Boston. I'm a bassoon player. I'm 23 years old. I'm from New York, United Pantoja. States. Grew up on Long Island. My name is Maíra. I'm from Brazil. I'm 23 years old. I'm a bassoon player. I'm 23 years old. I'm from New York, United States. Grew up on Long Island. My name is Maíra. I'm from Brazil. I'm Vengo de Chile, toco el contrabajo, tengo 19 años. Mi nombre es Eli Maurer, soy de Mi nombre es Raúl Gómez. Yo soy Nelly Guevara, de Honduras, toco violín y tengo 20 años. Music and the arts uh, are, are not careers for everyone. And not everyone can be an artist. We can probably argue that anyone can be an accountant, anyone can be an architect, anyone can be an engineer. You go through the hoops, you take your classes, you pass your university and you get your degree and boom, there you are. It's not that simple being an artist. You can go to university, they take your classes and in the end, you're still not an artist. It takes heart, it takes uh, uh, the ability to communicate to others, in this case through sound, and, and uh, tell a message to other people through sound. If they can do that, they will succeed. If they can't, there will be just be people who finished up their degree and didn't succeed in music, but will always be a good audience uh, for those who do succeed and we will be uh, understanding of the value of classical music for us. Now that we are in the University of Costa Rica, in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the forest, because we are surrounded by plants and animals that I have never seen in my life, it is a very good place for a session for a session porque estamos como aislados del mundo, no podemos hacer la música con más paz. So I think an artist is just someone is a vehicle from two things to get in touch with each other, the music 
and the people. So I'm in the middle, you know. I transfer the music into something, into a sound. In music, for some reason, the message is conveyed directly without the need to understand anything. No one needs to know how a violin works to enjoy the music it makes. And it goes directly into your soul whether you want it or not. Para mí la música es algo mucho más que una profesión, algo mucho más que, que una carrera. La, la música es, en, es, la, es la forma en que vivo, es la forma en que pienso vivir por el resto de mi vida. Es ese mundo, es ese, ese todo, es muy, es muy completa. No es, solo el, no es solo el instrumento, es la gente, es el pensamiento, es la, la, la sensibilidad hacia las cosas que yo considero básica del ser humano. It's a great way to express yourself. I'm usually a pretty shy person, and um, when I'm playing, I can forget about uh, people and express myself. And um, I can open up a little bit more. Two. Okay. Nothing there to play, really. Let's do your thing there at 70, please. Yeah. You know, you know why uh, they write it this way? It's, it's the Hungarian language. They always accent the first syllable. Bela, Bartok, Zoltan, Kodali. Tarara. It's a character thing from the culture. The Huns were a pretty nasty tribe as far as the Roman Empire was concerned. They helped destroy the Roman Empire. They were pretty powerful. And they were um, the kind of people who would not think twice about burning a village and killing everybody there, women, children, and all. This is the, the tribe that eventually grew into being Hungary and this Slav region there. So there is something in their spirit that is in, indomitable, that, that you cannot destroy that fire inside. They have to be present when you play that. It is soft, it is melodic, expressive, beautiful. And you have to play with a very dolce sound. Yet, something in it, there is that one power that cannot be erased. I need to feel that power. Uh, more and more I'm realizing it's, it is very expressive. Before, I used to think of just having a pretty sound and playing in time, but more and more I'm realizing that you can do more things than that, that being an artist requires more of you than just having a pretty sound. Okay. Okay, I do, I'm not playing the right note or the right articulation there, but it's, it's, it's in the colors. Inside the sound there's something powerful that I need, I need it to, to, uh, for it to come out. For this piece, you have to become a Hun, okay? You're an actor, and I'm giving you a character. In order for it to look good on the silver screen, you have to become that person. I think an artist is someone that can um, express exactly what they feel, and that's really hard to do. Um, um, Gosh, I guess the art is producing that. Um, it's not easy sounding happy or angry or like Hungarian or uh, something else. And I think an artist is the person that can really touch someone um, that's listening to them, really draws them in and understand what they're trying to express.
Sehr Deutsch. Very German, yes? Divide phrases every two beats. Every two. Don't do that. Make one long phrase, okay? Moderate. Kein Deutsch. Tres y un. The power of music is incredible for children. It's incredible for grown-ups. And it's finally something that is part of our collective experience. And an orchestra is probably the strongest vehicle of communication of music. Why do I say this? Well, the number. Number of people, 60 people, 100 people playing together. That's the idea. All right, any easier? What happens is you, when, you play, when you're playing lower, you open up a lot. Now you have to just have a little bit a little higher tongue. Yeah, yeah. If I ask you to just play the first no, the first B and, and flutter tongue it. Oh. Oof. Try it. <laughs> it's just the first no. One, let's play it. One, two. sound? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Much easier. The Youth Orchestra of the, of the Americas is extremely important because what we're doing here, we're planting seeds. Every student that comes out of here is a seed that's going to germinate, it's going to flourish. Each one of those students will touch many lives. My, my role as a, uh, as, a, as a coach is to help them play good and sound good, but equally important is to make them become op open, warm, understanding people. One thing, una cosa sobre the people who, who have pa, 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 always think in three, pa, 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 okay? Principio, begin. Los acentos, tan, taran, tan, taran, tan, taran, tan, taran, tan, okay? Aquí hay un tema que es muy interesante, realmente muy interesante y que va un poco a la médula de lo que es esta orquesta y de la, de, de la razón por la cual esta orquesta es tan valiosa, que es esta comunicación cultural entre los diferentes países. Sones de mariachi lo comprende perfectamente un mexicano, lo comprende perfectamente un guatemalteco, un salvadoreño, un costarricense, un nicaragüense, un peruano, pero no lo comprende muy bien un argentino, ni lo comprende así también un brasileño y un uruguayo, y menos un americano y menos un canadiense. You, uh, you've gone back to tying the, the notes the other way around. It doesn't work. It, it, now you got the right uh, thing, but it, 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 if you can go back, ti tara 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 tara, now you have the rhythm, now just change the tying and it'll be more idiomatic. Entonces tú lo has oído tantas veces que los trompetistas mexicanos ni siquiera miran la música, ellos tocan como siempre lo han oído con un estilo muy peculiar. Ahora, llega un trompetista anglosajón y lo leyó literalmente como estaba escrito. Claro, Blas Galindo lo escribió para imitar a como lo hacen los mariachis. Y, y Paul trataba de, 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 de darle todo su sentido rítmico y la frase carecía totalmente del carácter mariachi, lo carecía absolutamente. Entonces yo le di una grabación de, creo que justamente es de la orquesta de Jalapa, de hace unos años, eh, de, de sones de mariachi y le dije, mira, eso es un poco para que, para que vayas pensando en cómo hacerlo. Y cada ensayo se iba acercando, cada ensayo se iba acercando. Y hubo un día ya muy cerca del primer concierto que le dio.
You have just earned yourself a bottle of tequila. Y bueno, pues, si le pones sombrero y le cambias un poco la cara, parece mariachi, ¿no? Ya comprendió perfectamente que su papel en ese tipo de obras no es tocar las notas, sino darle un carácter muy especial a la música. Y eso lo hace mejor a él como músico, porque eso lo tiene que hacer igual en la música húngara, igual en la música de carácter, eh, que es música que está escrita de una manera, pero que finalmente trata de recrear la música popular. Artísticamente, they need to be inspired to understand the emotional value of every note they play, of every phrase they play. Every sound that comes out of these instruments carries an emotional charge. If these young musicians are concentrating and they are connected to what's happening with their instrument, they will be in control of that charge and be in a position to manipulate it. So this phrase now is going to talk about love, the next one is going to talk about pain, and the next one is going to talk about joy. If they are not in control out of that, they are still going to be playing their instruments very well, but the, their phrases are going to come out disturbed and no listener will give them credence for, um, for any artistic value. They're simply going to play the instruments and that's going to be the end of it. performs has a certain responsibility and when they go to different countries they want to show themselves in the very best light, in the very best way. And they are representing where they come from and the people where they come from will be proud of them when they see them on the world stages. And we're going to some of the most prestigious halls and by showing ourselves in the best possible way and, and, our, and thereby our cultures because that's who we are in the best possible way we start to develop a respect for each other and other people listening also uh, begin to just respect our cultures and us coming together and our persistence, our perseverance, um, our ability to make you know, very, very high caliber music, um, each of us studying in different areas. Realmente en improvisación en general, que a la hora de improvisar uno está simplemente tratando de desarrollar, que desarrollar ideas. ¿okay? Rítmicamente eh, puede ser un problema el tratar de, como de, de tirarse, por hacer una analogía, en el lado hondo de la piscina, ¿okay? en vez de empezar en el lado eh, pequeño ¿no? y caminar a lo largo de la piscina hasta llegar al lado hondo ¿no? o nadar. Eh, no es necesario tirarse de una vez a, a hacer lo más complicado que rítmicamente que, 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 que puedas hacer. Si estás tocando tre tresillos, pa, pa, pu, pa, pu, pu, para, 
Todas las culturas del mundo tienen música y todas las culturas del mundo pueden compartir la música. Eh, y prueba de ello es este grupo de, de estudiantes que, que vienen de, de todas partes de, del continente eh, con, una, con una sola cosa en común, que es la música. Aparte del lenguaje, pero no el mismo lenguaje de todos, porque hay ciertos estudiantes que vienen de Brasil y hablan portugués. La mayoría tal vez hablan español, pero vienen estudiantes de Estados Unidos y de Canadá, etc., donde el idioma no es el mismo. Entonces no es, no es una cuestión homogénea de lenguaje, pues hay varios lenguajes, pero todos comparten el mismo que es la música. Can we try 191? 191. 191. Sí. Y... Even less. Two pianos.
la música clásica se cree muchas veces la música de la élite. Esa es la visión que muchas veces tiene el vulgo o el pueblo de, de, de lo que es la música clásica, lo ven como algo de alcurnia. Es una visión errada, porque la, la música es para todos, lo que pasa es que no todo el mundo está, está, está expuesto a tener el, el mismo contacto con, con la música clásica que, que otra gente. Bueno, a ver, les voy a pedir que me ayuden a los niños para presentar a las diferentes familias de instrumentos. Ustedes saben que las orquestas, como las personas, for, tienen familias de instrumentos. ¿Cuál es el más grave de todos? Con el contrabajo. Tenemos la sección de las bellas, que es las flautas, y de los feos, que son los clarinetes. Ah. A ver, pues... Después tenemos aquí a los oboes, que son dos oboes, y el corno inglés. Yo no sé por qué en cualquier lugar del mundo que presente uno en la tuba siempre hay alguien que dice, uff. <risa> Quizá, a ver, un play a low note. Los frijoles. <risa> tuba y aquí tenemos trombón bajo y dos trombones. Después tenemos las trompetas que todo el mundo conoce, son trompetas. Y el, el corno y en algunos lugares se le llama corno francés, que es este corno que está aquí. ¿Ves? Después tenemos las percusiones que son todos, a ver si pueden tocar algo por ahí eh, de percusiones, así un poco de... Hagan ruido, de todas maneras. Pues tenemos los timbales, que es ese instrumento que está en medio, que son que son tambores afinados. Lo que me gustaría hacer es lo siguiente. Si pueden dos o tres niños venir, a, tenemos unas sillas libres aquí en medio de la orquesta. No, no, no se trata de echar relajo, es nada más para que vengan a oír cómo se siente adentro de la orquesta. A ver, siéntense ahí. No, ya, ya, ya está. Y él. Muy bien. Ok, muy bien. Señor director, 
Muchas gracias por el maravilloso espectáculo que nos ha dado para mí. No, una dedicatoria. Si me puede dar un consejo para mis alumnos, será para mí una gran honra. ¿Con eh, consejo? Eh, Nada más que... que... Sí, un... Uh, uh. ¿Qué? ¿Voy a speak Spanish? Sí, soy mexicano. Ah, ya. Yeah. <risa> un, un consejo. Pero el, el único consejo... Este es el curso. El, el único este consejo es, el es que trabajen muy duro. Ya. Y que si les guste la música, que sean muy contentes. Póngamelo, por favor. They were so enthusiastic about hearing us. And then when they did finally hear us, they were... I don't know, it was overwhelming. There were like so many kids there and like... I don't know, hundreds of people. But I couldn't believe I'd sit outside for like three or four hours waiting to hear us. So it was a lot of fun. It was definitely memorable. I compare everything that we do here to the States and I just could not see that happening at home. I couldn't see people standing outside for four hours hoping that they could hear something. You know, people wait for like rock concerts and whatnot hours in advance to buy tickets and then You know, you stand outside hoping that you might be able to sneak in a concert or something. But for an orchestra, that never happens. That never happens at home. And then to have a packed house on top of it all. You know, like a packed house. And then more people who want to come in. And they're just standing, waiting, out in the cold all day. After the concert, I was so inspired. I was just writing my journal. And... Um, In classical concerts, do you experience the amount of connection of audiences I've experienced with YOA, especially when you have a conductor and musicians that are willing to be flexible and adjust to the program of each audience. The most profound example of this I experienced was in Lima, Peru. After performing a two-hour concert that was filled with improvisation, dancing, stamping, and clapping, we were utterly exhausted. As we walked off stage, we heard we were going to do it all again. The reason was because there were hundreds of Peruvians who had waited in lines outside the hall all day to hear us play. Um, and we, we just, Oh my god, why can't I? Um, um, my brain is fried. I have gotten no sleep for the past night. Wait, wait, can I come back to you in a second? Deberían, deberían venir más al Perú porque es un país tan pobre ahora que necesita este tipo de música y ser más masiva esta música, más masiva, porque levanta el ánimo, ayuda a vivir, a, a soportar la, la, la crisis, de veras, es muy bueno, estamos en deuda con ustedes, muchas gracias. I think if you were to ask me, Scott, what is the best part so far of this orchestra, what do you anticipate to be the best part, I'm going to say the people hands down, because it's been really cool meeting people from all over, from different areas, from different cultures, from rural, from suburban, from urban, um, from rich, from poor, from Spanish, from Portuguese, from English, um, you know, from traditional lifestyles to modern lifestyles. It's so neat that everyone just sort of gets along well. You don't, you might expect antagonism, but you don't see it. It's really, it's a nice atmosphere. People in the cafeteria, the mixed tables, You know, and we have so much trouble doing that even in the, within our own countries. If you ask each person in your country, you've got a problem with, there's always some sort of problem with, uh, with the others. Every country's got a problem with, you know, rich versus poor. Every country's got a problem with a majority versus minority, with a sort of an indigenous population versus a, an, a European population, with, with so many of these things. And it's nice that we're discovering that if we can do this, among people from 20 different countries, there's no reason we can't go back and sort of create an understanding with, um, within our own countries. Can we do Tico Tico? There has to be a moment in the rehearsal period where the orchestra goes from playing and this tough situation into becoming a team, a group, and enjoying what they're doing. So we were playing this 
this encore, Tico Tico, that everyone knows, it's a, it's a samba, it's a Brazilian piece. And in my impression, the orchestra was playing it in kind of a square way. Probably not square, but they, they were working, they were working to understand the rhythms. So I had an idea uh, of inviting the girls who were the Brazilians, who were very nice girls and very happy people. And they said, and I told them, well, help us dance this music so that we can understand how to play it. And my surprise was that they not only said yes, but they left their instruments and they started dancing. And pretty soon the rest of the orchestra started dancing and it became kind of a collective, uh, like a frenesi in Spanish, you know, like, uh, I don't know how you say this in English, I know there's a word, but you know, it's a, like, it, it was like a party going on right there, but it was much more than that. And it became kind of the turning point. Uh, and this is not only my impression, it's their impression and also the coaches. Between the orchestra being this group of people trying to work out this music into an orchestra that was really starting to enjoy the process. Napoleón dijo que la música era el menos molesto de los ruidos. Mientras que José Martí dijo que la música es la forma más bella de lo bello. Eso hace una, una hace evidente la diferencia que hay entre un dictador suelo con el oído cuadrado y un gran hombre como fue José Martí. ¿no? Un hombre pequeñito de estatura pero inmenso de, de talento y de espíritu. Y Martí también dijo que, que la música es el alma de los pueblos. Y yo pienso que en el Nuevo Mundo tenemos muchos pueblos con, una, con un corazón enorme ¿no? y con, con un sentido musical extraordinario. Y la orquesta esta es, es como el, el símbolo del Nuevo Mundo, de lo que, de lo que hemos logrado a, de este lado del de, de Atlántico, ¿no? a través de la música. Y, y por eso es que es nuestro deber mantener esta, esta organización viva. Y de eso yo me voy a ocupar personalmente. Thank you. 
todo el mundo está poniendo lo mejor para, para que las cosas salgan lo mejor posible y para demostrar a todo el mundo que nosotros estamos listos para, para hacer las cosas súper bien y, y para competir contra el que venga, de una. Y yo vivo en Europa y lo sé que esta orquesta compite con orquestas juveniles europeas. Y lo digo porque lo sé y porque toco en orquestas juveniles en Europa. Yo no conozco un solo ejemplo de una convivencia tan increíble de 20 diferentes países haciendo una cosa tan bella como hacen ellos. Ellos son gente que ha dedicado su vida entera a esto. Es gente que trabaja duro y creo yo que es un ejemplo para la juventud de lo que se puede hacer con talento y sobre todo con trabajo, pasión y entrega. Esa es una orquesta que es un ejemplo no solo para las demás orquestas de cualquier parte, sino para nuestra juventud y para todos los que tenemos la posibilidad de algún día entregarle o darle a un niño el increíble regalo de la música. Estamos cada vez más alejados de las cuestiones no materiales, ustedes lo saben mejor que nosotros. Esto, lo digo muchas veces, no tiene sentido en pesos y centavos. En ese sentido todos perdemos, pero en el corazón, en lo espiritual, todos ganamos. No, le, no cerremos la posibilidad de lo que nos da ese increíble orgullo como nación, cualquier nación del mundo, que es dejar una cultura y dejar una expresión de lo nuestro como lo acaban de ver hoy por la noche. So, the concert in Lima, the second concert, it totally reaffirmed in my mind that classical music can make a difference. It was such a profound example of communication and just awesome, awesome, awesome. It was such an awesome experience. We connected with that crowd like I've never, ever, ever experienced before. And it really, like afterwards, I really felt like we had definitely made a difference through classical music. There is hope for classical music if if you're willing to to be flexible and really um, do play and perform what the crowd needs, wants, whatever, just make that connection and oh, it really makes a difference and it, it totally erased all doubts of what classical music can do. That's what I want to say.